Lyft recently announced that their workers would have to return to the office after just last year saying that their employees could have a fully flexible work arrangement. In the first quarter of 2023, we have seen many companies follow in the way of Lyft in issuing these return to office mandates. In predictable fashion, these companies often cite a lot of the standard boilerplate reasons that we've seen at this point. You know, office culture, collaboration, mentoring, things like that. I even saw Jamie Dimon CEO of JP Morgan and Chase cite something known as spontaneous stuff, something I'm not sure I'd really want to take part of, but interesting nonetheless. I'm not really here to debate or discuss those standard reasons right now. I think that would be a good topic in another video. Let me know below if you if you want to hear more about that. But in this one, I noticed something in the article about Lyft and their return to the office that to me kind of sparked sort of idea on is there a trend here and that was that Lyft is in addition to issuing this return to office mandate they are announcing layoffs at the company they announced that they would cut about 26 percent of their workforce as well as not fill 250 open positions at the company those layoffs got me wondering what if there is a bit more of a dark or sinister side to the reason for these return to office mandates. No, I don't really mean a company as sort of a mustache twirling villain, although that is kind of funny imagery to think about. I mean more like, what if it's sort of a convenient solution to their problem? Right, so there's three more people we can easily lose. A lot of companies are starting to lay off workers especially in the tech industry. We've seen a lot of layoffs happen there. The, uh, many companies bulked up during the pandemic and are kind of starting to realize that they have too much workforce. I think Meta is a good example. They grew from like 40,000 employees pre-pandemic to like over 80,000 and now they're starting to lay workers off. Um, there's a lot of other companies that are doing this as well. Some of it is talk around pending recession. You know, we're not in a recession yet, but it could be coming and companies could be laying off in anticipation for that coming recession. So getting back to return to office mandates, how does that factor into this? Well, a lot of employees have gotten used to and really prefer working from home and workers have really resisted returning to the office because of that preference and the freedom it allows them in their personal lives and you know just the time savings not commuting to the office. If you like working from home or having flexibility in your own personal life, go ahead and hit that like button for me. So if you are a company that is looking to lay off employees, a good way to do that would be to issue a return to office mandate because you're going to weed out or filter out some people immediately. They'll either quit or they will just refuse to return to the office, in which case you may have justifiable cause to fire them. You see, getting someone to quit or firing them is different than laying them off. Typically, a lot of these companies will issue severance payments to employees that they're laying off to help them transition as they're looking for new jobs. But employees that leave on their own or are fired for some justifiable cause are not offered those severance payments. So not only are these companies able to get rid of the workforce that they needed to drop, but they also save money in not having to pay out these severance payments. I do want to reiterate, this is just speculation on my part. When I look at the data, I do see some coordination between these two ideas of layoffs and return to office mandates kind of coinciding with one another, but I don't have any inside knowledge to any of these companies so I can't say for certain that's their reasoning, but I just wanted to share a few of these examples with you. So returning to Meta, in March of 2023, they announced about 10,000 layoffs, and that's on top of everything they've done in 2022. And also in 23, March 2023, they have stopped offering remote jobs in new postings, and Mark Zuckerberg himself has called for more in-person work 
at Meta. Next, we have Disney. In March of 2023, they laid off about 7,000 people, or they will be laid off in the near future. And also, Bob Iger is calling for four days in the office at Disney. Looking at Amazon, we see that in February of 2023, the CEO called for three days in the office. And in March, they announced another 9,000 jobs being cut for a total of 27,000 jobs laid off in 2023 alone. And the last one, Google, the timing doesn't quite line up, but there is a little bit of coordination here. So they announced in January, they cut another 12,000 jobs and they issued that in April, they would have they would like employees to return three days to the office each week. Again, like I said, the timing on that one is sort of backwards, but again, a little bit of coordination there. So let me know in the comments below, do you think that companies are coordinating layoffs with return to office mandates, or do you just think it's a nice convenience or a just sort of a spurious correlation at this point? If you want to know more about these new age tech companies and why they might be in trouble in a coming recession, check out the video on the screen now. Thanks for watching.